Welcome to the Business Success Tutorials. My name is Michael Mills. I'm one of the Senior Business Development Analysts at Touchstone Business Systems. We've underwritten the cost of a series of three educational tutorials that will teach you about the main challenges facing small business owners and how to overcome them. These challenges prevent 96% of small business startups from ever achieving their business goals. In this tutorial, I'm going to lay it on the line as to what it really means to own a small business and what you need to know to beat the odds and be among the 4% of business owners who actually turn their business into a thriving, profitable venture that gives them everything they imagined they would get when they first started their business. Small businesses, as defined by the International Data Group, are those firms with up to 100 employees. They represent 97.7% of all business owners in the United States. And 92.5% of these small businesses have fewer than 20 employees. If you're watching this tutorial, chances are this is all about you. If I may, let me begin with some hard facts about the state of small business. Currently, there are more than 25.5 million small businesses just in the United States, employing more than half the American workforce. There are 600,000 new businesses started every year. There are 26,000 new products and brands introduced into the American marketplace every year. According to the report on the future of small business by Intuit, the number of small businesses and startups will triple in the next decade. Studies show that most businesses never achieve the goals the owners had for them when they first started out. Chet Holmes writes in his newest book, The Ultimate Sales Machine, that fully 96% of all small businesses won't make it. The conclusion? The competition is tough, and it's only going to get tougher. So the good news is, you're in your own business, and that's great. The bad news is, it's really tough to stay that way. There is this belief that if you work hard, you'll succeed. Does that sound familiar? It's true for most of the small business owners we meet out there. The Small Business Administration reports that half of all small business owners work more than 60 hours a week. That's 50% more than five days a week at eight hours a day, a normal work week. They work hard, but they still fail at an alarming rate. Dun & Bradstreet reported that 90% of business failures are a direct result of poor management. Business owners don't have the knowledge of how to manage their staff. Without the management tools and the knowledge, there's no management. And as a result, 46% of all newly hired employees will quit in their first year. And this statistic doesn't include those who will be fired or simply let go. New employees are frustrated. Existing employees are frustrated. Executives report that managers spend on average seven or more hours each week sorting out personality conflicts among their staff. The average cost of a bad hire in the United States is $60,000 because of salary expense, training costs, sales opportunities lost, a company's reputation damaged, all because the wrong person was hired for the job or poorly trained or mismanaged. 96% of businesses will never make it to 10 years. Why is that? According to the SBA's report on the state of small business, most business owners start a new business after having worked in a similar industry and feeling like they know everything they need to know, they go it alone. They want all the glory, control, and the big bucks of owning their own business. The problem is, while they know how to do the tactical part of the business, they don't know how to run a business that does that tactical work. In other words, if they start a contracting business, for example, they might know how to build homes but they have no idea how to build a business that builds homes. That same report supports this theory, lack of experience in three major categories of knowledge, marketing, management, and financial. The lack of experience in any of these categories can lead to catastrophic failure and bankruptcy. Dun & Bradstreet reports that 90% of all business failures are the result of the lack of knowledge or the lack of putting to work what knowledge the business owner had learned. So let's say you've already come a long way. You've owned your business for 5, 7, 12 years. You consider yourself having made it. Ask yourself what you really have. Because most business owners, they don't have a business. They own a job. What they have is a company where things tend to be chaotic and overwhelming. They have a company where there's very little freedom for the owner. For example, when was the last time you took a vacation? What was it like the days before you left on that vacation and the few days after you returned? 
Can you walk away from your business whenever you like, for as long as you like, and know that the business will continue on successfully without you? Or is the answer more likely that things would fall apart? When you are at work, how many hours a week are you on the job? Most business owners are always on the job. They rarely stop thinking about their business. It keeps them up at night. They even dream about their business. And they're the ones who have to come in when there's an emergency or when an employee calls in sick. Again, does that sound familiar? And given how many hours you're working, what's your hourly rate of pay? Usually business owners, when they make this calculation, they complain of making less money, taking on much more risk than than when they were working for someone else, all because of this potential payout when their ship comes in. So what do you need to do to be really successful? What's the difference between a business that makes it, a business where their ship actually does come in, and a business, the 96%, that don't? There are three key reasons. The first, documented systems for training, task delegation, and employee accountability. A business owner understands from the very beginning that they are not going to be the ones who will be selling their products and services in the future. They are not the ones who will be doing the billing and the collections in the future. They are not the ones who will be hiring new employees in the future. So they watch and document what they do that works. And they create training tools and they develop expectations of what others can accomplish using these tools. In essence, with documented systems, or what larger companies called SOPs, Standard Operating Procedures, they replicate what they do through others. Secondly, business knowledge. The owner understands who their good prospects are and who their bad prospects are, and they run a calculated effort to attract and convert the most profitable clients. They require reports on the success of those processes so that they can control their growth strategically. And finally, business organization and discipline. They manage their employees effectively. They recruit the best candidates and they monitor their efforts. Instead of doing everything, they get things done effectively through others. So now that you know what you need to do, the next question is, how do you do that? How do you build these business systems and implement them into your company? For 12 years, we've been advocating operating manuals, written documents explaining how to do what it is you need done for every position in your business. But over the years, we've seen a problem with operating manuals. As a business grows, for example, the systems get more and more complex. Maybe there are special letters that need to be sent as part of a system. There are scripts and emails and other related files that are elements of a specific system. And then the system is never there when it's needed. It's lost in binders or stashed away in some complex Microsoft Windows file folder system. And if the employees can't find them, even if you can't find them, the system never gets used. The Touchstone Business System is a tool that assists business owners with the consistent documentation, organization, and implementation of systems within their company. Touchstone is an online, web-based application that is available to employees wherever there's Internet access. Touchstone links all of your systems to positions on your organization chart to automatically create job descriptions. Employees log into your company's Touchstone account, click on their position on your organizational chart, and their job description appears. Their job description is an index of systems that they're expected to perform. They click on the specific system they need to perform, and the documented process appears with all of the instructions, expectations, and other system elements hyperlinked and organized together to assist them in their consistent performance of that task. All of the systems in your business are categorized in four core functions. Whether you're a manufacturer, a lawyer, a financial planner, or a construction contractor, whatever type of business you have, these are your four core functions. In one of the other business tutorials, we provide a simple five-step plan for developing all of the systems in your business, a way to create what we call your business systems blueprint. It's a graphic representation of your business in terms of its systems. But for now, let's lay the foundation. Your business has four key functions. Getting the business, these are all of your sales and marketing systems. Doing the business, the systems for delivering on the promise made in the sales process. Systems for client fulfillment, operations, customer service. Basically, all of the systems that directly relate to what you do for your clients. Running the business, 
These are all the systems for the activities that go on behind the scenes like invoicing, paying your bills, collections, hiring and firing, preparing financial statements, budgeting and cash flow projections, essentially all of the financial and administrative systems. And finally, guiding the business, the strategic systems for leading, managing and guiding the business from where you are today to where you want it to get to. Touchstone has a library of process names. Once you register for an account, you can access the systems library and pick and choose from an extensive list to help you fill out your own infrastructure of systems. I thought I would log into a Touchstone account and give you a short demonstration of the power of this tool. You enter your username and password, click on login and you're taken to your control panel or home page and I will speak about this very briefly at the end of this short tutorial but first I'd like to talk about the sort of the three key areas of touchstone the first are the four key functions and this screen will be familiar given the last slide I showed you the four core functions this is essentially a database of systems for your business and you can actually build your business by clicking into any one of these four core functions within a, a core function there are what we call sub functions which are completely customizable you can create any number of sub functions you can rename them and I'll demonstrate that right now when you first begin with a touchstone account inside getting the business there are two sub functions or sub categories marketing and sales well because of our background and doing the emith mastery program and and all of the businesses that we've worked with i tend to think in terms of of four different uh, categories of sales systems first of all marketing is what i call target market development so i'm going to change marketing to target market development I'm going to add another function called lead generation and advertising. I'm going to change my sales to sales conversion. And I'm going to add one more sub function for reconverting existing clients, upselling them, reselling them, things like that. So now I have four different categories of sales. Again, these are all of my sales systems. If I was to add anything that was something other than a sales system, like a production process or a financial or administrative process or a strategic management leadership process, I would put it in one of these other core functions, respectively. But for the sake of today's presentation, I just want to give you uh, an example of how to do this. So you completely customize the sub categories or the sub functions and now I can actually even populate these sub functions from the general processes systems library I can go into this and I can say what systems do I want for target market development so I'll go into target market development and I'll ask myself what systems could I use from the systems library I might say well I do need target market development trading area development website maintenance and development remember target market development is really understanding who your clients are how they behave what makes them tick so what is the message that you need to get out there and how do you get it out there so that you can attract the most probable clients the best clients so these are very much research processes I might choose competitive analysis to see what my competition is doing and then I will click Save. And what this will do is it will download these systems and or system names into this specific subfunction in my Touchstone application. And I can do these for each of, I'll do one more. I'll do my lead generation and advertising. I will change the subfunction to lead generation and advertising. And then I will look for other types of 
advertising systems, things like direct mail, email marketing, press releases, pay-per-click, strategic alliances. So these are all different systems that would be part of generating leads. And then again, I'll click on the Save function, and it will download those systems and those system names into my core function. So the idea then is to create a, a database of systems. Once you've got your systems built for the four core functions of your business, you click on the organization chart and you begin to build an organization chart of your future business. And we've got a great tutorial on using organizational charts as a management tool, but this is really, really important. Um, this is a dynamic organizational chart. It is always with you. As your business grows and as you grow towards your goal, you can actually add positions, change positions, add more positions, take positions away and adjust things. So people always know where you're growing and what the business is going to look like. You'll also notice that there's functional accountability. So we have the marketing and sales area over here. We have the operations area, the client fulfillment processes here. We have the positions for finance and administration here. And we don't forget about management, this top level area here, which is responsible for making sure these functions actually happen. We also understand the reporting accountability in each area. So, so let's say, for example, we, we build out our organizational chart, and we want to create another position called marketing associate. And my marketing associate is going to report to the manager of marketing and sales. When I click save, it will put it right in here. Now, let's build a job description for the marketing associate. I click on the marketing associate position, and it opens up a blank job description. And I will add systems or link systems from the systems database, the four key functions, to this position on the organizational chart to create a job description. So this person is going to be helping me with mostly lead generation systems, maybe the direct mail system, the email marketing with newsletters, my referral process, pay-per-click, and maybe one more, strategic alliances. So you'll see that I actually create a job description. And so now, when a marketing associate is hired, he simply goes to his position on the organizational chart, clicks on it, up pops his job description. And his job description is an index of systems that teach him what he needs to know about how to do what it is that I need him to do. So for example, if he clicks on the referral process, it will take him into the actual tools that document the referral process. And he can go through this step by step and understand how it is that he wants to do his job. And then finally, there is a management function to the Touchstone application. If I've hired a marketing associate, and maybe his name is John Smith, and he's gone through and uh, done the referral process with one of our clients, and as his manager, I want to check to make sure that he's followed the system, I go to my home screen because I am the manager of sales and marketing and I manage John. He's a marketing associate. I click on John's position and I can actually look at the referral process and the checklist for the referral process and look to see has he completed the process and I can actually look through and see that he's gone through and checked off every box. You'll also notice on the left underneath process tools that there are check boxes to the left of each item under each type of process tool. This tells me that John Smith has been trained in all of these process tools. So there can't ever be a situation where John Smith comes to me and says, but I didn't know how to do that. 
So that's a quick overview, a quick 10-minute overview of the Touchstone application. Remember, you have this database of systems where you can download systems and system names from the general business processes library to build your systemic infrastructure. You have an organizational chart which gives you functional accountability and management in your organization. You can click on a specific position on the organization chart to pull up a job description. And by clicking on any system on a job description, you can actually pull up the documented process for how it is that you want to uh, do that process. And then finally, you have the whole control panel function to manage and track what it is that you're doing within the Touchstone application.